to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. I have a question for you. When is the last time you met a man? What is it like when you meet a man? What is it like when you actually meet a real man? A man who has been filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Someone who has sensed the influx of the power of God that's made him fully human and fully alive. When it, what is it like when you're in the presence of a man that you know has humbled himself before God that morning? What, is, what do you sense when you're in the presence of a man who lives a life of justice, of self-mastery, of fortitude, of prudence? of faith, of hope, of love. What does it feel like to be in the presence of a man? I want to be that kind of man. I want to grow in humility before man and God. I want when people see me not to see me at all, but to see Christ. I want to be that kind of man. Uh, and I think we have a, a, a man with us today that I can say when I'm with him, I sense a dignity, a humility, and a power that comes from a life sold out to Jesus Christ. He's a good friend of mine. He's stood with me in good times and bad. He's one of the men that's been instrumental in working in our ministry and helping the word get out and has his own very strong ministry. Uh, his name is Pete Socks. Pete, welcome to the show. Well, thanks for having me back, Bear. Yeah, um, you know, Pete, you, uh, you've you really been there for me in times when uh, you've looked past my faults and seen what really needs, what my needs are, and and, and you've and you've seen the the desire for the you you have the common desire for the for the gospel to reach men and women, and so it's very humbling to have you on my sh on our on the on the show, and uh, I'm looking forward to our discussion. Uh, definitely, yeah, glad to be here. <laughs> well, Pete, uh, Pete. Uh, does a lot of things. He he does uh, one thing in particular. There's two things that he does that are very that are really oriented uh, towards ministry. One is he is a Catholic book blogger. I believe it's what it's called. Yep, that's it. And then you also have your um, oh, what's the name of your your podcast again? I'm sorry, I have it written down, but uh, the name of my podcast is Off the Shelf. Yeah, Off the Shelf. Yeah. And so in both in in both these instances, he just loves books, and you and I are alike in that in that. Now, how many how many books do you read fully read I would say in a week or in a month? I, well, I try to get one book fully read a week, and you know that's kind of the method to my madness of being able to do the review, to write the review each week, and to prepare for an interview. Um, I've often told authors that um, I won't, I, I don't bring the book justice if I only skim through it and look through it halfway. And I, and I go through that book the entire way and read it so so that I'm prepared for the interview and that you know I know what I'm talking about and it, it goes a lot smoother. <laughs> well, when you let me ask you a question: Do you uh, do you use a pencil or a pen or a highlighter when you read? Uh, in a separate notepad, yes. I don't write in books. That you know, <laughs> it's there's two types of people in the world. You know, I was talking to Bishop Noonan about this, our bishop in in Orlando, and. Uh, he said, yes, I, I can't read without writing in the books or underlining, but I use a pencil so I can erase it. <laughs> there you it was go. just kind of a good middle of the ground. I have a lot of used books. There's some books you really can't buy anymore new. Right. And so I have a lot of used books, and, and uh, I really appreciate uh, every now and then I'll see a little pencil in one of the, one of the series of books that I have um, on the Primitive Church. Uh, a very beautiful, small, tiny penmanship, but... I know they have that say. I, I cannot read without a pen in my hand. And I, I, I mean, I have a, a, a really big library, but no one would want it, I guess, because <laughs> I'm one of those that, you know, Doug Keck uh, interview, has interviewed me a couple times for my books. And 
Man, that's like going to de- defend your um, your master's. I mean, he remembers my book better than I do. He'll ask me questions <laughs> and go, I have no idea <laughs> what that was about. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, you know, like I said, that's just kind of what I what I do. My my methodology is is in, in the whole cusp of the whole purpose of my, my ministry when I started it seven years ago was to be able to inform people of what these great books are that were out there that can change their lives that they can learn from. And, you know, it's two edged thing with them. I'm trying to do the reader justice, too, by giving them a good idea of what's a decent book to pick up and, and read and learn from. Well, you know, for me, uh, it is Lectio Divina in mm. that sense. When I read it, when I and I read, I, I think we have probably a lot of I, re, I don't read as many of the newer books as I don't keep up as much as you do. But I have a reading stack of mm-hmm. a lot of the new books. I may may read one every month or so. But my ancient books, I mean, um, I, I, I'll tell you the secret to my, one of the reasons why, why I've gone so much deeper in the Lord is a cigar on the beach at sunset with a reading lamp. So as it goes into the darkness, I don't even know. And uh, that cigar has carried me deeper into the Lord <laughs> than probably many, many other practices. I know it's kind of interesting, but I think everyone needs to find that place where they read, where they pray, you know, where they spend time. Yeah. You need that place in your home or, or, or somewhere around you where that's your area to do that. You're not distracted by other things. Um, where is that you, for you? Where is that for you? Right where you are now or where, where is that? No, no. It's a, it's a recliner in the family room in the in the downstairs section of the house. So you get um, to have a – it's kind of like a little area of your own man cave, a little separate little spot. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, every man needs a man cave. I mean, my man cave is out on the lanai uh, in Florida, and here in Hawaii, it's down on the beach. You know, it's just, yeah. and, and when I go down, you know what's interesting? When you go down there and you smoke a cigar, no one comes and bugs you. <laughs> They're like solidarity makers, you know, them are uh, solid, solitude makers, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Hey, so for those yeah, of you guys who uh, really would like to know what Pete Sox looks like, uh, you can actually watch our, our radio show on YouTube uh, and, and we would love it if you go to the Bear Wozniak YouTube channel and subscribe. We're trying to get to a certain number, trying to add about 500 more subscribers, because if we do, y- YouTube will help us evangelize. But I gotta, for those of you who can see Pete Sox on the YouTube video right now, which you can go to because we post it there before it, it goes out over the EW10 network and all the podcast apps, in the far left corner, or his right side, I kind of think I see Beanie Babies. Are those Beanie Babies <laughs> okay, over dude. there? So here's be- the deal. Yeah, okay, let's I had get- to quarantine one of the kids' rooms to do this today because yeah. uh, my mother-in-law's downstairs and the kids get a little loud. So this was the quietest place in the house. So yes, those are uh, Disney-themed Beanie Babies back there. I will openly admit, but they are not mine. Now here I, I introduce you, and I went, <laughs> was very serious about it that I'm with with when I'm with Pete Socks, I I know that I'm in the presence of a man. And then I'm looking over the corner. I'm going. I think those are Beanie yeah. Babies. He looks there, so. It, take, it takes someone with with strong uh, uh, ability to be able to say that they will sit in a room live and have Beanie Babies in the corner. Yeah. So, so you have you, you have know, a certain. That doesn't you're, bother me. You're confident in your virility. <laughs> yeah. You're confident in your virility. I'm trying to think what would be my what would be my counterpoint to that. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure it's there hiding there somewhere. But you know, Pete. Uh, is is has a lot has meant so much to me because he's faithful and uh he faithfully uh you send out a newsletter and it's just not you sending out you'd put a lot of thought into that weekly mm-hmm. uh, newsletter for us can you tell them about that and, and beg them to subscribe to to, uh, to yeah. the deep adventure newsletter Sure. I mean, it's it basically it's somewhat the heartbeat of the ministry telling you what's going on each week it informs you of who the guest is. It gives you access to this show before it's aired on EWTN, uh, highlights some of Bear's um, short uh, virtue talks he gave on the beach in Waikiki each week. Um, so, yeah, it's just and some inspirational quotes directly pulled from his book. Um, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And uh, yeah, if you want to get a sense of what Deep Adventure Ministries is all about, you'd want to subscribe to that newsletter. And you know what's cool, Pete, is too, is, is, is because we send them uh, the YouTube video version mm-hmm. of uh, the link to it in that email. So they can go to YouTube and press the share buttons and my brother-in-law needs to hear this or my son needs to hear this. 
uh, you know, so it, so in that sense, it's 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 a way not just to see what's going on with the ministry; it's to jump in, you know, feet first, be a part of it, and be a part of it. Yeah, we're talking with Pete Sox. He's uh, he's he's he has the the blog site Catholic Book Blogger and Off the Shelf Podcast. He's also I forget what your kuleana is there at Breadbox Media. What is what is it you do there? Just before I'm we have general, to take this break, I'm a general manager. I was appointed general manager in July of last year. Wow, and Breadbox Media is kind of taking off. It's just a, it's a, it's it's very yeah. important. It's a very significant uh, area of ministry that's providing platforms for a lot of different type of of mm-hmm. podcasts. One that you and I might even do. We can talk more about that when we get yep. back. This is Bear with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Please go to our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak. That's Bear like a grizzly bear, and Wozniak is W O Z N I C K. And please subscribe to our newsletter because I mean subscribe to our YouTube channel because you'll see. These um, radio shows uh, being video cast there, and um, when you when you subscribe, it it get it YouTube says oh people are subscribing let's keep let's push this channel so we need your help we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak adventure. I'm your adventure guide. Bear Wozniak, and we have as our co-adventure guy today uh, someone coming to us from somewhere in Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah, you, you said it was near New Oxford. We, I live outside of New Oxford, which but, but is where, twenty but, minutes. Okay, twenty minutes east of Gettysburg, so that'll give you a historic uh, landmark. Okay, there's a there's a marker there, but yeah, it's like saying oh, I I'm a, I was raised in Coralitas, which is just six <laughs> miles from Aptos, California. Yeah. Like yeah, where I, I've heard of. I thought that was just a rumor, but no. But you were actually in Gettysburg yesterday. That that were you there uh, was, at the battleground, or just happened to be visiting the oh, city? Oh no, I, I was there. I was actually born and raised outside of Gettysburg, so I'm, that's my stomping ground. So had to take care of some business, and while I was in there, I drove out to the battlefield a little bit. And it looks a little different than what it does in the summer. There's snow out there right now, but oh man. <laughs> But the good thing that I was many tourists, so it's easier to get around. <laughs> well, I know is uh, I've never been there, but I know. One of the most profound experiences I've ever had is being at the Lincoln Memorial. You know, there. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, which is, of course, who gave us the Gettysburg Address. But when you're there mm-hmm. and you see the sacrifice that was made and the devastation that was there, it's very it's sacred ground. Yeah, it's something. It's something it to behold you, when you're there. And it helps you remember that you know we're only mortals. And you you, you just said mm-hmm. there's a new book out that that you're oh, reading. Yeah. Uh, Memoria Morta. What is it? It's uh, Remember Your Death. Memento Mori Memento by Mori. Uh, Sister Teresa. Pauline Books Pauline Books and Media has it out. Good stuff. I, I can't even get them to put my book in their stores. It has the, <laughs> it has the, the imprimatur or something like that and it's huh. all that kind, but you got to go through all these hoops to get your your book in their stores and here she got them to publish your book. But tell tell us what the what what is it you're getting out of what what does Memento uh, Mori mean and what what is it, what is it you're getting out of that book? Memento Mori is taking time each day to do an exam, in which I'm sure some people are familiar with that if they do, you know, any kind of liturgy hours or anything, the exam you do at the end of the day. But the focus of the Memento Mori, Memento Mori um, exam is looking at your death and using that as a catalyst to improve your life as you're living it today. Realizing that each of us is going to die, whether we want to believe that or whether we want to face that or not it's going to happen and actually my review of this book just posted today as we're recording and the book opens up with the line you're going to die which is the exact same line that father larry richards be a man book opened with and that's the book that changed my life and set me on the course i'm on today so as soon as i read that i was pretty pretty stoked for this book but uh yeah it's it's pretty pretty intense uh, it's a 40-day read taking you through Lent, but you can really use this anytime. But it's set up for the 40 days of Lent. Um, and, but you can do 40 days anytime. I mean, you can it's, do it, yeah. it's like the novenas. I pray one almost constantly, but I don't necessarily even do a, a formal novena. I'm just doing nine-day laps around the rosary and praying for a specific thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I want to, you know, the thing memento mori. Do you remember where? The, do you know where that phrase came from? Where the Genesis is? Do you remember? It I, goes I, all the way back to to early Christians. Um, and actually, she talks about in here. Uh, Saint Benedict talks about keeping your death daily before your eyes. So it's 
it's been deeply rooted in the Christian faith, but maybe not necessarily practiced as much in modern times as it has been through the century. You can go through writings of the saints, um, as she explains in this book, and many of them discuss it. You know, um, the, 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 when you were a, a general in the Roman army and you had a great victory, you had come to uh, Rome. You'd always leave your army, except for in the famous case of one general, on the other side of the Rubicon. And you went in, when you went into Rome, they would be cheering for you and applauding you, and there'd be this great parade. And just a few steps behind you was a slave, and he would say these words over and over and over again, memento more. Remember your death. So although you're receiving all this acclaim, remember your death. In the, early, uh, in, in the days of the desert, fathers... Uh, they would be fortunate if they had a full gospel. You know, each each of these monks would be by themselves in these little in these caves in these cells, and they would uh, they would um, maybe have a book, uh, a Psalms or part of the Psalms, maybe a gospel, uh, but almost all of them had a skull in their cell. Mm-hmm. And I've worn a skeleton's ring. Uh, I don't have it on today, but for a long time, and people will see me in long ride home with a skeleton's ring on my finger, and they wonder, that's kind of what, what's that about? It's about memento more. I have a beautiful skeleton ring that my wife gave me that has the Our Father inscribed around mm-hmm. uh, the edges of it, Yet it but it's, 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 the, it's the head of a skull on that ring, and it reminds me memento more. And the, the early, the, 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 the monks of the desert rarely... They might see each other once a week at the most, but sometimes just once once every few weeks. And when they would get together, they usually wouldn't speak to each other. They would just say the words memento more. Or if they did speak, that would be their, that would be their greeting and their final g- greeting to each other when they left. Remember your death. Remember your death. Remember your death. But those monks of the desert, because they had that focus on the gritty truths of life, they won great spiritual battles out in the desert. They took on demons out in the desert. And I think through their prayers, uh, Arian, Arian heresy was mm-hmm. defeated. The, the persecution of the church was, uh, was, uh, it came fast on the heels of the persecution of the church. And, and, but but it, this, this thing, every time we say Hail Mary, you know, now and at the hour of our death, mm-hmm. it's significant to meditate on our death. Can you give us some more? Give us some more thoughts about that. Well, one of the things you pulled out there, you know, and we talked about this last time I was on 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 your show, is is the state of the church today. And you know, you read all this stuff about the Desert Fathers and what they did in in their prayer life to um, change the church, and you kind of sit back, and this just struck me as you said that. Where are the Desert Fathers today? Uh, there, there, there's nuns there that are convents that are starting to grow again. We just had one here nearby that was in the Diocese of Harrisburg that um, there was a convent in Elysburg, PA that split, and they did so because of the growth, and they built a new uh, house down here around where I'm at. So those, they need our support because they are the ones that are ultimately going to win uh, the battle and prayer that we need today, because they are the ones that have the time to do it consistently, and uh, um, as much as it needs to be done, just like the Desert Fathers did it, just like the Benedictine monks did it. Um, so, any support that we can throw their way, we really ought to. Amen. You know, I'll tell you, Pete, that's so true. It rings so true. Uh, there's two two thoughts come to my mind when I was uh, writing my first book which became an Amazon bestseller deep in the way of a surfing guide to the soul before it was sold even, you know, or I think I had sold the concept. Normally you write a fir- first couple chapters in an annotated outline. They had bought the book <laughs> to give me their down payment. But I was like, Oh, now what should I really write? And I went up to the, <laughs> I went up to Holy Spirit spouse, the Benedict, uh, Mary spouse of the Holy Spirit monastery here, the charismatic Benedictine monastery here in Hawaii on the North shore, which is where I get my spiritual DNA from back in the 73 at the Pecos Benedictine Charismatic Monastery in, New Me- in the Sangre de, de Cristo Mountains in New Mexico, two of the people that, the two people there that meant the most to me, Sister Mary Jo and fa- Brother Michael, moved to Hawaii to found this monastery, and now, of course, it's Father Michael, and they're way up in their years now. I've known them since 73. I went there 
And the one clear word I received from the Lord while being in that place of prayer was follow the ancient path, go back to the church fathers. It was, and I really didn't even know what follow the ancient path meant back then. I had, to, I had, to, <laughs> had I hadn't even really fully discovered the early church fathers. I think at that time, but, but being in that place of prayer, I know that that's where everything good that began in my ministry began from those prayers at the monastery. My mother, when she passed away, my ministry exploded. I know her prayers. And then there's the third place. It's this morning when I get to mass, there's already 20, 30 older women there, been there for 20 minutes praying the rosary. To me, those, mm-hmm. those are the, it's, it's the monasteries, my own, my own mother in heaven who prays for me, and of course my father here on earth, and these women with their rosaries. I mean, there's older yeah. men there too, but I, the, these are the ones that I look at and go, thank you. You're the ones that are giving, that are, it's your prayers, whether you know it or not. I know it's why Pete's ministry and my, my ministry have, have uh, traction. Absolutely. I mean, we can even look at Pope Benedict. I mean, you're not even get into discussion of, you know, why did he step down or whatnot, but he stepped down to go into a life of prayer because he knew that's what the church needed. Oh, my God. Hey, we got to take a break. I want to come back and talk <laughs> about that. He knew that's what the church needed. Amen. What a humble man. What mm-hmm. a humble man. I saw a video of him uh, walking along uh, with, I guess, I think it was the, I forget who was walking in front of him, but he was walking in, he was walking along and one man at one bishop after another shook the hand of this gentleman walking in front of him. And Pope Benedict would extend his hand, and they would reject it. They wouldn't even reach out to shake his hand. A man, you know, I, I would say 16 just ignored his extended hand. And I look at that, and I go, oh, it breaks my heart. Uh, but it is, he's doing his greatest work right now. I love it, the catechism that he was responsible for making happen, but I think you're right, his prayer life right now. We're talking with Pete Sox, my good friend and partner in crime. Uh, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We got to let you guys know um, that Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak is alive and kicking on iTunes, Amazon Prime Video, and Google Play. And so you can, uh, you know, share it with your husbands or share it with your your sons. I, I, someone I was talking to yesterday on the on the on the phone, a tech support guy. We kind of wandered off into a conversation. We talked about this TV show, and he says, i got to have my son watch that with me when he comes home from college this weekend. It's a 10-episode series of men riding motorcycles across the desert, uh, and so it's airing on EWTN again. I think it's going to be Thursday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern, all 10 episodes, and then fast on the heels of that, uh, the the new season two six-episode series will be coming out where we rode motorcycles. Season one, we rode from Cocoa Beach, Florida to Monterey, California, and season two, we rode from Cocoa Beach down into Key West with Archbishop Wenske, up into Allentown, New Jersey, down the Blue Bridge Parkway, down the Tail of the Dragon, and then down to Orlando to talk with Bishop Noonan. So it's pretty gnarly. Uh, but there was something about our ride from... So please, go to iTunes, and you can... Uh, it, it costs you fifteen ninety nine to get all 10 episodes, but that little bit, that pa- that about 80% of that passes back through to the ministry. It helps us to do the next season. But it's something you can go where, if you watch it on EW10, you might miss a few episodes or be watching them out of sequence, but if you can watch them in sequence, it really tells a pedagogy right there. And one of the things you'll know is that when we went into the Big Bend country of Texas, you don't kind of go to the Big Bend country of Texas. You don't kind of pass through. You got to really want to go to the Big Bend country. It's way out of the way, um, hundreds and hundreds of miles away from, you know, the the main freeway that you would be using crossing Texas. And when you get down there, you discover the sort of environment that the monks of the desert were in. As uh, we're talking with Pete Sox today about the concept of memento mori, remember your death, and uh, it's this is what life is like. You have to live life on purpose. If you're going to take the freeway, don't expect to find yourself in heaven. I mean, Jesus really made it clear. Wide is the way that leads to destruction, but narrow is the way that leads to life. And then he said these words. Listen, he said these words. This isn't the Starbucks Jesus that you're thinking of. This is the real Jesus. He says, and few there be that 
follow there on. Jesus isn't this meek and mild, genderless male that we like to make him to be. Jesus said, don't think that I've come to bring peace. I've come to bring a, a sword, you know, I, to divide son against father, daughter against mother. Um, and, the, and, the, and the division that this sword brings, the marismos of that sword is this simple question, who do you say that I am? This is what Elijah said on, the, on Mount Carmel. Choose this day whom you will serve. If God is God, serve him. If Baal is God, serve him. Stop sitting on one, stepping on one leg and then the other. Stop sitting on the fence. Choose who you will serve. Because you're going to choose somebody. As Bob Dylan's old song said, you're going to serve somebody. Why not serve the God who designed you for happiness, created you for joy and for a relationship with him? Everything else that you've been serving, trying to fill that emptiness in you, is like one of the early church fathers said, it's like watching a man walk down the street, gulping, reaching out and grabbing air and swallowing it. It's just emptiness breeds more emptiness. Give your life to Jesus. Stop in your tracks. Get off the main freeway. Head to the big country, big bend country. Head to the desert and just abandon everything and say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done and abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. We're with Pete Sox today. Pete, aloha. Welcome back to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, Bear. Having fun. I know. It's, I just th This is a man that has really uh, been steadfast and faithful in his work uh, in our own ministry and in his ministry, too. Tell us, uh, what else is the Lord speaking to you about during this season in your life? Wow. Um, just, yeah. I mean, I think I talked about it last episode about leaving the secular world and breaking out and, and doing work in the vineyard. And that was a huge, a huge leap of faith. Uh, it's, it's been a good leap of faith, but it was a huge leap of faith. Um, giving me the time to focus on the different ministries I'm in and, and build them up and, and, um, seeing some pretty, uh, impressive things going on. But the only reason that's happening is because I handed it over to him. It's not me. It's kind of like, I always have this image, Pete, of, there's an old Charlie Chaplin black and white 20 second video and he's just he's just standing on the side of the of the railroad tracks and he's spinning his umbrella or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it hooks the train and then boom, he's off for a ride with that train. <laughs> That's about what it's like. <laughs> you can't just you know there, there used to be a saying in the early days of the charismatic renewal, Mary had a little lamb, it never became a sheep, it became a charismatic and died of lack of sleep. <laughs> Does that sound kind of familiar? <laughs> yeah, that sounds like it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, is like the wind. Yeah. The people oh, yeah. that follow the Holy Spirit, is what he said, is like the wind. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know where it's going. This is the thrill of being a Christian. And if you're a Christian, you're expected to be bold. God doesn't mm -hmm. do wimpy things. He made dinosaurs. He made black holes. He made the universe. Get ready for the ride of your life. Absolutely. What would, you say, what would you say to, I'm thinking particularly this man out there right now who's, maybe he's going through a divorce or, or, or thinking about leaving his wife or, or, or he, maybe he's unemployed or maybe he just did something unthinkable. What would you say to him? What would God's word be to him right now to get his life back on track? Mm. I think the one word that he should focus on is hope. There's always hope. Nothing's ever lost. Uh, start simple. Go, even if, let's say, you're you're weak in your faith um, and you're not comfortable with going back to mass because you're maybe afraid of you know people talking or whatever, which that shouldn't be an issue, but it's human nature. That's how we are. Go to Eucharistic Adoration. Sit in the Eucharistic Adoration Chapel alone, and, and maybe one or two people will come in with you. But you're always there, one on one with Christ. Hand everything everything over to Him, and just talk. That's what we need to do: is have that personal relationship with God and His Son, and um, form that personal relationship. And once that happens, uh, everything else becomes unimportant. There's, there's no problem too big that we can that we can surmount that. In, in defeat uh, when we're in that one-on-one -on -one relationship. And and that that means getting real with God. Absolutely. I, I and remember, yeah. It also, it also points back to something you said there earlier. Um, 
of what Jesus was. And, and Jesus was a man, lived in the desert. He was gritty. And he wasn't this, um, as Father Larry puts it, this guy tiptoeing through the flower field. That, that, that wasn't Jesus. And the people that portray him that way are, are so off. He's target. not the Starbucks Jesus that wants to stand yeah. and, and read from his latest poem, Why Can't We All Just Get Along, right? Right, right. Um, he was a man like us. You know, he, he, he took on that humanity for a reason, to show us how to properly live our lives. And uh, I think it's important that we focus on what Jesus actually was and not what the secular world tries to portray him in being. So much of it uh, you see is just kind of this genderless man who is soft and, and uh, gentle. But he, but yes, he had that ability to be gentle and kind, but uh, he brought the surgeon's knife out every now and then too. You know, and he wielded the sword uh, uh, very directly, you know, it would point at people's hearts. You know, his, uh, one of the things I think too for people, maybe people out there don't even know what Eucharistic adoration is. Uh, that just means you go to the nearest Catholic church and sometimes, most times, a lot of times, there's a special chapel and you have to knock on that door to go in because it's locked because the Holy Spirit, Jesus is there in the presence of, in the Eucharist. And it, of course, we need to protect the Eucharist, but you can go and just sit before him. Another thing you can do is you don't have to go to the, the church where you, where you attend. You can go to the next town over, mm. go to, go to confession. I've yeah. heard so many men say that's when their lives, they felt the Holy Spirit. come. The thing about it, Pete, is men feel two things, shame, and then they feel fear. Mm -hmm. Shame when they've blown it, and we've all blown it. Shame when they fall into a habitual sin. And then, and then they're too afraid to go to the Lord and ask for forgiveness and ask for his help. Brothers, you can't do this uh, on your own. You, Jesus came to earth. Why? Because he knew you needed him. Mm -hmm. He went to the cross for you in solidarity with you. And you can, uh, you can by uh, going to the sacrament of confession, receive a tremendous power of God's forgiveness by Eucharistic adoration, as Pete says, just going and just sitting in the presence of the Lord. You may not feel anything, but over time it has a great, great effect. We're talking with Pete Sox, catholicbookblogger.com. And also he has on Breadbox Media, his, and he's the general manager of Breadbox Media. He also has his own podcast off the shelf. Uh, Pete, what's the best website for them to find you on? Uh, well, again, if they want to see the reviews, there's catholicbookblogger.com. Right now I'm doing – I'm the in-house book reviewer for Catholic Stand at catholicstand.com. So you can find my stuff there. And, of course, you can visit breadboxmedia.com and see my show and the many other ones we have under lineup right now. Okay. When we get back, Pete and I are going to have a different sort of discussion. Mm -hmm. We got something up our sleeve we need your prayers about. This is Bear Wozniak with a Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll return after a few moments. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you to go to our website, deepadventure.com, and you can, uh, gosh, you can subscribe to our newsletter. You can uh, go to our bookstore, my Amazon best-selling book, Deep in the Wave, Surfing Guide to the Soul, you can get there. But autographed copies of it, hello, you can get it at Amazon too, but autographed copies to our website. And my, my second book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, a lot of gear from Long Ride Home, our TV show, you can buy the DVDs. Uh, as well. So we'd really invite you to go to our website. But here's one thing I want to invite you guys to. We have something so cool. It's called Bears Man Cave. In fact, we had a Bears Man Cave meetup yesterday. It, men I go, have to go to our website and sign up there, and it costs you 10 bucks a month. Or women, you can give that to the man in your life as a gift too. And then we give them access to a secret Facebook group. You cannot join it by going to Facebook, you have to go to deepadventure.com. And then you're a part of this secret group, and the men really just get real with each other. Pete's a member of the Bears Man Cave. Uh, you can talk about, you can share inspiring things or challenging quotes or something, and you could say, brothers, this is what's going on in my life. Pray for me. Or you can be praying for your brothers. So we challenge, we equip, we mobilize, and then I'm po we post my stuff there too. And then like yesterday, one of the, the coolest thing that we do is, about every two or three weeks, some random night or day or whatever we feel like, I, I just send a, a, 
I, I post a post and say, hey, we're going to have a Bears Man Cave meetup. And what that means is you just go to the Zoom, zoom.com and you enter a, a meeting uh, ID number and boom, all of a sudden all these brothers show up on your screen, you know, dozen or more brothers show up and we spend exactly one hour together and we talk story a bit like two of the men two two weeks ago started talking about maybe they needed to start a man cave, a little men's group of their own uh, in, you know, some form of it. A lot of them have. Some of them meet on the back deck of their house with a shot of whiskey and cigars and, and they read from one of my books. Uh, another man, uh, two weeks ago, he said, I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a retreat. And now guess what? He's doing a retreat on March 16th <laughs> and the man cave is going to show up via video zoom for about 25 minutes and do a, the men of the man cave are going to show up at his retreat via video zoom and talk to the men there and just say, Hey brothers, you're not alone. And so the man cave is just the coolest experience. I don't think, I don't think there's anyone else doing what we're doing. So you can go to our, you can go to our uh, deepadventure.com and, 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 uh, and join bears man cave. But also, you know, if you guys, you can't really be my friend on Facebook. Um, it's sad when I delete it. Well, I, yeah, the other day I deleted 40 surfing friends and we, by the end of the day, I had 40 new uh, Catholic friends on the on my Facebook page. But people uh, can't really be my friend. It's tough. You can follow me, though. And so don't give up just because it says, oh, Bear can't add any more friends. Follow Deep Adventure Ministries or follow Bear Wozniak, and, uh, and then we can, we can uh, you know, bless each other and we can help evangelize, work with each other. So we're here today with Pete Sox, who has his own very powerful ministry, but also supports other ministries including our own and one of the one of the things that he does is he interviews uh basically catholic authors right pete yep uh catholic author every week and so yeah. and so and that's on what are your what are your two outlets for that well that that podcast can be found on breadboxmedia.com and the name of my podcast is off the shelf so i want to ask you a question pete i meant i mentioned this to you yesterday i think mm-hmm. you're aware that i've thought about having this we have, the, of course, this radio show, but I wanted to do kind of a video podcast. I yeah. think you were aware that I mentioned Bear Wozniak Unchained a while ago. You've mentioned that, yes. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and it's something that, like, I know there's some things you incubate on. Mm-hmm. Kind of like Elijah had the vision that it was going to rain, but he had to squat down seven times and pray, and eventually it rained so deep the chariots got stuck in the mud. Um, but yesterday I was with Cindy, uh after Ash Wednesday and we were talking, I go, I know just the perfect person to do this with who would be really great. We would be great together as a team and it would be Pete Sox. So uh, I thought we'd let the people in on a, uh, on this so that they could pray for us about what, what, yeah. whether we should proceed or not. Yeah, definitely. The, the prayers would be helpful. See if that's the direction we should go. I mean, cause it's going to take some time and, and uh, both of us are, are busy in our, in our ministries and we need to pick and choose what we devote our time to so yeah the prayers would be helpful it has to be the right thing at the right time like right now i'm so blessed because kim sunderman is become my radio production assistant so she's got me booked double booked two radio shows a week all the way i think almost through the end of june now wow. and so that means i'm doubling up and sometimes tripling up so that by the end of june i will have enough shows for the rest of the year and then that opens up this opportunity for the Bear Wozniak on chain or whatever we end up mm-hmm. calling it. But I really think it'd be, I think that we need to reach the millennials. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I you know, as tough as it is to say, Joe Rogan's show can be so horrible. <laughs> but you, but I started my show based on his inspiration of the mm-hmm. style. Yeah. And he, and so many young men are being inspired by that show you you listened to it i just oh, listened yeah. to a really good debate he had the other day on, yeah, on, I, on, go ahead i tend to gravitate to when he has the sports guys on there <laughs> yeah oh yeah he's such a great mma guy but yeah i mean uh, he, but he has jordan peterson on and people like that mm-hmm. too so but he teaches you something and then louder with crowder has kind of a cool show have you seen his yet yeah i actually watched some of it last night uh, the one where he went out to the uh campaign the campus talking about building the wall and had the uh, debate with the students. <laughs> it's really wonderful because he's not condescending, but he uses yeah. a very Socratic message. And uh, he did one with, with women, uh, some women that were at a college campus saying, uh, I don't believe we need any more new gun control laws. And they would be, people would come up and be mad with them, and then he would say, well, let's go get you a gun permit, see what you have to go through. And they were, like, shocked, all the controls mm-hmm. that are already in place. Well, I think it's time for a Christian-type 
louder with Crowder slash Joe Rogan meets Mother Angelica type thing. Yeah. Yeah, that would be an interesting concept for sure. You know, my, my, my radio show began as that. I had friends of mine that were really great guys that were big wave riders, but they didn't know Christ. They weren't Catholic necessarily. Um, a, ver a variety of guests like that is where I started, and then it evolved into this Catholic radio show. But I think it'd be cool to have... Well, I, want, I want people to, to go to... Um, go to... Um, Deep Adventure, go to uh, deepadventure.com and write to us and see what you say about this. But I think it's time for us to do <clears throat> like a podcast format so we could do 30 minutes or five hours, three hours if we wanted to, like Rogan does. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, and that's the joy of, of podcasting format in itself. You're not, you're not tied to a time slot. You're not limited to breaks. Uh, it's very free flowing, which is why I gravitated towards that. Um, mm -hmm. It's definitely a, a lot looser medium. Well, did you have you ever seen any of Glad with Crowder's little skits that he does? Yeah, I saw those too. <laughs> well, you know, C Cindy, my wife, is a really good writer, comedy writer. Ah, Most okay. of the skits that we have on our on our Long Ride Home TV show, you know, we have about a minute and a half skit every episode, mm -hmm. just about that has nothing to do with. You know, it's totally <laughs> different. Yeah, like in, in season two, we're being in season one, we were chased by a bounty hunter in the yep. Big Bend country. Season. Two, he makes his appearance again. They chase us up and down the coast. And some really hilarious stuff happens. In season four, I think, we're going up to Lansing, Michigan, and we're going to be looking for Bigfoot. So we do these little <laughs> one-and-a-half-minute skits. So I want to do – Cindy's really good at writing these little skits. And I think it would be fun to do stuff like that and, and perhaps also uh, – like, like the man on the street thing is kind of what he – Crowder mm -hmm. does at the – you know, do you, do you have a video – do you have the ability to take a little video camera out and do a man on the street interviews? Oh, uh, well, might be able to figure that out. <laughs> it's not that hard. You can do it all with your camera, dude, yeah, you know, nowadays. Yeah. Well, Absolutely. We, we want people to uh, pray for us about this and see if this is something that Pete and I should do together or if it's something different. But uh, by talking about it today, it kind of breathing life into it and saying, let's, let's, pursue, let's pursue this because we, we want to reach the millennials. Mm -hmm. And they need Yeah, it. definitely. And they don't listen to the radio. Nope. No. And they don't watch TV. Yeah. They, they gravitate towards that podcast format because it's – and a lot of people do nowadays because it's convenient. You're not tied to, well, I have to have my radio on at this time to hear this show. It's like, okay, I got it on my phone. I'm driving home from work or I'm driving to work and I listen to it now. Yeah, and I mean – It's just a very convenient format. Yeah. Well, could you dig that? Because I think if we did something like – I have a friend of mine here, Dr. Thomas Cook. He's a Catholic – He's the guy that kind of introduced me to G.K. Chesterton years ago. Mm. But he's a psychiatrist, and he's, he's beginning to look here in Hawaii, medical cannabis. What are the mm. pluses and minuses of that? You know, uh, In other words, I would like to get outside the box. I would like to mm -hmm. get way off the shelf and be able to bring all kinds of interesting people together just to open up dialogue. Because I think in the fresh air of dialogue, there's room in there for evangelization. Oh, yeah, for sure. When you start that conversation, you can... You can uh, steer the ship in that direction once someone's comfortable. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's exactly what it is, isn't it? There's mm -hmm. that moment when you see the chink in the armor and you go, that's where that person, that's where the the arrow of the Holy Spirit can get through. We're talking yeah. with Pete Sox, and after we uh, end the show, which we're doing right now, you probably hear the music ending pretty soon, Pete and I are actually going to talk more about the Bear Wozniak Unchained podcast or whatever we'll end up calling it, but we would love to have you guys Please pray for us to see what the Lord's up to with this with this whole concept. Until uh, until next week, Pete, we got to sign off, man. Yeah, Viva we do. Cristo Rey. Viva Cristo Rey. <laughs> Coming to you from Waikiki Beach. Don't forget to go to Facebook Live in the mornings and follow me every morning at seven around seven thirty a.m. Somewhere wherever I happen to be in the world, I do an Ocean Sunrise Catechism. And lately, we've been coming from Waikiki Beach. So tune in. Till next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha! Aha. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10 episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group, all at bearwozniak.com. 